Welcome to Wheelox Latin, Chapter 22. In this chapter, we're going to be looking at the fifth and final declension of Latin nouns. We'll also be looking at one more additional use of the ablative case called the ablative of place where. And then we're going to look at a summary of the uses of ablatives that we have looked at thus far. So by way of a quick review, thus far we have learned our first through fourth declension nouns. And here are some paradigm nouns that we have looked at previously. We had our first declension that had both masculine and feminine, but mostly feminine nouns, aqua, aquai, poeta, poetai, were some examples that we've looked at. Second declension, filius, filii, masculine, but we also have second declension, neuter, like saxum, saxi. Third declension, we have masculine, feminine, and neuter forms. There's a couple of different uh, examples or paradigms, scriptor, scriptoris, kewitas, kewitatis, nomen, nomenis. We've also looked at, a, looked at a subcategory of third declension called the third declension isthem. Uh, again, masculine, feminine, and neuter forms, hostis, hostis, ars, artis, and animal, animalis. And uh, then most recently, we have looked at fourth declension, fructus, fructus, manus, manus, Cornu, cornus. Those are, again, masculine, feminine, and neuter forms. And this brings us to our final and fifth form. Uh, spes, spei, dies, excuse me, deis, dei. Um, these are mostly feminine forms in fifth declension. Uh, there are a couple or a few uh, masculine forms. The word de, deis, uh, is, is masculine in any compound uh, form of the word deis. So again, there's first and second and third, third I stem, and fourth and fifth. I probably should have had that being animated as I went. But uh, this is what we're going to be looking at here in this lesson. Nota bene. Each declension, of course, has its own set of endings, and you've been memorizing them as we've gone. If you have not, at this point, nailed down the first four declension endings, now would be a really good time to nail them down. Let's look at a chart of all four declensions as we've learned them thus far. Now, that looks like a lot, but if you've been staying with it, you've learned all of these. You can see in first declension, again, mostly feminine, uh, I, I, um, uh, I, arum, is, as, is, second declension, masculine, Us, e, o, m, o, e, orum, is, os, is, and second declension neuter. Um, e, o, m, o, a, orum, is, a, is. Third declension masculine and feminine endings are the same, and we have that little blank to represent the fact that there's such a varied uh, endings in the nominative singular case. So we just say blank. Uh, blank, s, e, m, e, s, um, ibis, s, ibis. Third declension neuter, very similar, just changing in the nominative and accusative uh, plural forms, and of course uh, the uh, accusative singular because of the, the, the neuter rule. Whatever's in the nominative has to be in the accusative. Blank is e, blank e, a um ibis, a ibis. Third declension i stem, again very similar. We're going to add an i to the genitive plural. Instead of um, it becomes eum. So we had blank is e, m, e. S, ium, ibis, s, ibis. Same thing in third declension, I stem neuter. We're going to add an I in the nominative and accusative spots as well as the genitive uh, plural. So we have blank is e, blank e. Uh, that ablative uh, singular is also an additional variant. It's got a long I in the ablative singular here. Ia, ium, ibis, ia, ibis. Fourth declension, masculine and feminine endings are identical. Us, us. Ui, um, u, us, u, um, ibis, us, ibis. Notice the macron over many of the us, the us, uh, except the nominative uh, singular, which indicates that, that, without the macron, which indicates that it is in the nominative singular case. In the fourth declension neuter, we had u, us, u, 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 ua, u, um, ibis, u, uh, ibis. So again, uh, hopefully you have got these memorized and nailed down. Now this begin, uh, leads us, rather, to the final and fifth declension, and here are our endings. Fifth declension, again, notice that mostly feminine, as I mentioned earlier, there will be some, a uh, few examples of masculine forms. We'll look at that in a minute. But here are endings. Es... E, 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 notice there is two forms in the genitive. 
there's either a short E with a long I or a long E with a long I. I'll explain that here in just a minute. Again, dative form is identical to the genitive singular form. Uh, we saw this in first declension. Remember, it was AE in first declension genitive singular, and it was AE in dative singular. Uh, well, here we have the same kind of system here. AE, excuse me, EI and EI, pronounced AE or AE uh, in both genitive and dative singular. Cusative singular is M, EM. Ablative singular, A. Notice the macron here over the E. And then es, erum, ebus, es, ebus. Now, note bene here. There is, in the genitive and dative singular, two forms, short e when it is following a consonant. Or if it's after a vowel, it's going to be a long e. It will have a macron. I'll show you an example of that here in just a second here. I want to show you something that's very helpful, I think. We compare fifth declension to third declension. You see some very uh, interesting similarities here. You can see I just pulled up the third declension masculine and feminine forms. Blank is e, m, e, s, um, ibis, s, ibis. Let's highlight the similarities here. Notice in the plural form, e, s, s, with the macron, in the nominative and the accusative plural. In the genitive plural, we had um in the third declension. Here in fifth declension, we have erum. So you've added this er in front of it. In dative and ablative plural, we had ibus in the third declension. And here we have ebus with a e, with a macron. So you can see very similar there. In the third declension, we have the letter e, an ablative singular. In ablative singular fifth declension, we have e as well, but it's got a macron over it. Accusative singular is the same for both of them, E-M. Uh, the dative, third declension, had a letter I with a macron, pronounced E. Uh, here, in the, again, the, the dative, we have the E, the, the long I, but it's got an E in front of it, so a E. So there's a similarity there. Now, the nominative and genitive uh, singular uh, don't really have any correlation, uh, so there's sort of a uniqueness in the fifth declension here. Uh, notice there's a macron over all three forms of ES in the fifth declension, in the nominative and uh, nominative singular and plural, as well as the accusative plural, so ES on all three forms. So what I wanted to show with that is that there's some similarities. So if you've learned your third declension, masculine and feminine endings, then there's not a lot of variation here. Just note the variations, S in the nominative singular, AE in the genitive, and if you know the genitive, you're going to know the dative, AE. And then most of the other forms are exactly identical to the uh, third declension, am in the accusative, a, but we're going to add an, a macron here, an ablative singular. S is the same. And instead of um, we're going to say erum. And then for the date of an ablative, instead of ibus, it's ebus. And then the accusative is the same as. So for some people, that may be helpful. If it's not helpful for you, then you can ignore that comparison. But for some, it is helpful to, to kind of see those uh, similarities here. Now, let's look at the two different forms uh, for feminine and masculine. Here we have the feminine res, rei, rei. Notice that in the genitive and dative singular, because the e is following a consonant, it's a short e. So it's rei, rei. And then rem, re, res, rerum, rebus, res, rebus. Now, if you want to... No, how do you find the stem here? Well, it's easy. The ending is ES. Look at that nominative singular form, ES. You drop the ES, so your stem is R, just the letter R, and you add the letter R to all your endings. So res, re, i, re, i, rem, re, res, rerum, rebus, res, rebus. Now, I also gave you the example of a fifth declension masculine, which again, there's only uh, a few examples here. Uh, Nota bene here. Only DS and its compounds are masculine in the fifth declension. But notice here, uh, again, DS, nominative singular. You take the ES, drop that ending, and that leaves you the stem, DI. So you're going to add the DI all the way down to all of the endings. Notice that because E in the genitive and dative singular, the E is following a vowel, we're going to have a long mark or a macron over the E. So it's DI. The E, the M, the E, the S, the Erum, the Abus, 
Dies dievus. All right, so we've got the word res rei, which means affair or thing, and dies dei, which means day. And, uh, and so those are our two examples of masculine and feminine and the two variants with uh, the genitive and dative uh, long E in the genitive and dative. So that's our fifth declension. Now here is, there we go, there's, there's highlighting that E in the genitive and dative there. Now here's the chart with all five declensions together. So it's sometimes helpful to look at all these side by side to see all these declensions. Uh, again, if you haven't memorized all of them at this point, this would be a really good time to do that. So let's take a look at the last part of this lesson, and it's uh, one more additional use of the ablative case. Now, we have run through a bunch of uses of the ablative the last several weeks. The ablative of means, the ablative of accompaniment, the ablative of manner. We've looked at the ablative with cardinal numbers, the ablative of time when or within which, the ablative of personal agent, the ablative of place from which, and the ablative of separation. This week, we'll be looking at one more additional use of the ablative, the ablative of place where. Let's look at a definition of the ablative of place where. The definition is that the ablative of place where indicates where something is located or where the action is taking place. That's pretty straightforward. You'll recognize because you'll see a noun or pronoun in the ablative case with the preposition in or sub. In or sub. And of course, you'll translate these prepositions as in or on if it's in or sub. You'll translate under and of course, whatever the, the, the object of that preposition is in the ablative case. So let's look at a couple of examples of the ablative of place where. Here we have in magna casa we won't. You have magna casa. Casa is in the ablative case. You can see that A with a macron. Casa is a first declension, uh, first declension noun. So we've got an ablative singular here. We've got an adjective magna, which is modifying it here. We won't is our verb, third person, plural. They live in magna casa. They live in a great house. So this is telling us where the action is taking place. Where are they living? It's in the great house. It's in the house. In magna casa. So we see that the ablative there with the preposition in. The next example we have navis sub aqua fuit. Again, aqua is a first declension noun, ablative singular. We can see that a with the macron on it. And so this is our ablative of place where it, it's, and this is indicated by not only the aqua in the ablative case, but it's preceded by the preposition sub. So Nawis, the ship, who it was, there's our verb, was subaqua, under the water. Where was it? Under the water. This is an ablative of place where it's a pretty straightforward uh, function of the ablative case, and it's really easy to recognize and translate. Now, just a couple of quick notes here. We want to note that there are two categories of ablatives, those that have prepositions and those that do not have prepositions. The ablative of manner, usually with the word cum, and the ablative separation with ab, de, or ex can either be with a preposition or without. Ablative accompaniment, cardinal numbers, personal agent, ablative of place from which, and the ablative of place where all require prepositions. The ablative of means, the ablative of time when or within which will not have prepositions. So this is just uh, important to keep in mind here. Uh, ablative manner and separation can go either way, and we'll talk more in class about why uh, that is. And then uh, ablative of means and ablative of time within, when or within which will never have a preposition. And you can see that list that will always require the accompaniment, cardinal number, personal agent, place from which, and place where. So we'll be looking at this more in class. Make sure you do the reading for the chapter. Don't forget to study vocabulary. We will have a vocab quiz later this week.